The Hog Blog is brought to you by Rodent Pro. Open 24 hours a day at rodentpro.com. And Vision Products, the best rack at the best price. Check them out at visionproducts.us. Hello and welcome to Hog Blog Genetics Video 2. I'm Dan Kroll and I'm so glad you're back for two. I didn't bore you too badly. In the first video we talked a bunch about the very basic structure of chromosomes and DNA and we learned a bunch of vocab words and we left off with the concepts of phenotype versus genotype. So in case you missed the first video, let's do a quick review. Phenotype is the actual appearance of an animal or an organism and the genotype is the genes that you may be carrying within your organismal body but not expressing necessarily. So just to illustrate that example, here is a lovely normal hognose snake. It's a wild type, it looks just like they do in the wild, but you can't tell by looking at her, but she is actually carrying one gene for albinism. So she can have albino offspring depending on who she um, breeds with. Now the reason you can't see this is because one of the genes is being masked and so her phenotype is normal, but her genotype is different. It is heterozygous or het for albino, as we call it. Now, the way that this is possible and the reason this happens is going to be the subject of our video today. So pay close attention because this is important stuff. Now, before we get started, I just want to say something. There, there are many different tricky ways that don't apply necessarily to what we're talking about that organisms can reproduce, like haplodiploidy and parthenogenesis and asexual reproduction, all those things. We're not going to be talking about any of that, and if you want to study that or ask me questions about it, feel free. Today, we're just going to be talking about plain old white bread missionary position sexual reproduction, which is you have... DNA from mama and DNA from daddy gets mixed together to make a unique organism in the end and we're going to focus on that because it's the easiest place to start honestly when learning about how uh, genetics works and how uh, organisms reproduce. That being said, let's start with mitosis. In a snake's body, cells are constantly splitting to make new versions of themselves for growth and for healing. So when this happens during a process we call mitosis, each cell duplicates its chromosomes and each new cell gets a full set of 36, for most snakes, uh, 36 chromosomes exactly identical to every other cell in its body. But when a snake's body makes reproductive cells, which we call gametes, uh, the cells undergo a fascinating and vastly important process we call meiosis. Now during meiosis, the cells reproduce their chromosomes, but then they split up and the end result is a bunch of cells that only have 18 chromosomes instead of 36. Now these halfway snakes in the form of sperm and eggs come together during fertilization to create a new baby with a full set of 36. Now the really cool thing is during meiosis, the genes get mixed around like shuffling a deck of cards in a process that they call crossing over. Now in crossing over creates hybrid chromosomes and this ensures that each sperm and each egg carries a combination of traits which varies from their parents' genome. So this is why your siblings don't have the exact same genes that you do. Each baby is a unique combination of two unique combinations of DNA. So just to make sure we got it, let's look at this really simple example, okay? Take two snakes, completely normal looking, but both of them are carrying a gene for albinism. The commonly used shorthand for representing these alleles is with letters. So let's make the big A stand for normal or wild type, and then the little a will represent the albino allele. So when our male goes through mitosis, he will create new cells, all identical to him, with one albino gene and one normal gene in every single cell of his body. But when he makes sperm during meiosis, each sperm will get only one allele. Likewise, with the female, her eggs will be either albino or normal carriers. So, if one of the albino sperm swims over and meets an albino egg, fertilization occurs and you end up with an albino baby. But if an albino sperm meets a normal egg, you will get a normal baby carrying one gene for albino, just like the parents. And if normal meets normal, you will get a normal baby with two copies of the normal genes. Now these three babies, although they are siblings from the same parents, from the same clutch, they have three different genotypes and two different phenotypes. And by the way, when you have two copies of the same allele on a given gene, we call that homozygous. And when you have one copy of each, we call it heterozygous. And uh, so, so in this example here, you have a, a normal with two copies of the normal gene, we call that homozygous dominant. And when you have obviously one copy, we call that a heterozygous. And then the albino has two copies of the, of the little a, or the recessive gene, we call that homozygous recessive, okay? Now what is dominant and recessive? What does that mean? Great question, because that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So, <laughs> so when you have, um, 
two different alleles on a given gene, sometimes one of those alleles has the ability to mask the effects or correct, in some cases, the effect of the other allele on that gene. So in this interaction here, we have one baby that has two normal copies, which is obviously going to be normal because that's all the copies it has. And we have one baby with two albino copies, obviously going to be albino. But why is this baby in the middle looking normal? Why, you know, if it has one albino gene, why isn't it half albino or why isn't it albino? Um, and the reason for that is the normal allele in this particular gene is dominant over the albino allele. So it is masking the effects, or in this case, I think correcting the effects of the albino uh, allele. So we call that dominant and recessive. And that interaction right there, it comprises what we call simple genetics or Mendelian genetics. And that's what most of the basic interactions between uh, alleles are going to be made up of, is of dominant and recessive interactions. Now that's not the only way genes interact. Um, there's, there's all different kinds of things like pleiotrophy and epistasis and you know incomplete dominance, codominance, things like that, which we'll talk about in further videos. But for right now, the basic understanding of simple Mendelian in genetics is all you need to do what we're going to do in video three, which is uh, talk about how to actually predict inheritance by using Punnett squares and, and using our knowledge that we've built of, of basic Mendelian genetics. So with that, I will say thank you and thanks for watching um, Hogblog Genetics episode two and tune in for episode three. If you have any specific questions about any of the genetics videos, don't hesitate to comment uh, down below or send me an email at hognoseblog at gmail.com. I'm Dan Kroll and thanks for watching the Hogblog.